Hello, and welcome to this session. Thank you for choosing Clinical Key Physician. My name is Natasha, and I'm the Customer Success Manager for Elsevier Health Southeast Asia. Today, I will be talking to you about how you can keep your healthcare practice current and adaptable. What we see in the world today of healthcare is that, that there are many, many challenges that we have to face. This is not just for us at Elsevier, but more importantly for our clinicians. Our clinicians today are flooded by the number of patients that they have to see every day. The growing volumes of patients due to many factors such as increasing population, increasing aging societies, it's making it very, very difficult for clinicians to be able to manage the workload that they see on a daily basis. It is not just the volume of work, but it's also the complexity of care that is being demanded today. Patients come in with more and more complex conditions. They come in with multiple conditions, comorbidities. They come in with very complex care requirements, which require clinicians to spend more time with patients. It also requires for clinicians to work in multidisciplinary teams and face new questions every day. And that's what we see in the healthcare environment. There are more and more questions coming up. These questions are coming up, not just from clinicians, but also from patients. And therefore it's very difficult for clinicians to keep up with the advances in knowledge that we see in healthcare. So when clinicians attempt to answer questions that they, are, that they may not be familiar with, or they may need some confirmation on, they tend to refer to multiple sources. The challenge with referring to multiple sources is that it takes up time for the clinicians. When you're referring to multiple sources, it could lead to inconsistency in care because different people within the same organization would be referring to different sources. And also in some cases, the question presented across multiple sources may or may not be reliable. When this happens, it impacts the patient directly. Inconsistency in care, raises healthcare costs by asking the patient to do multiple tests, multiple diagnoses, uh, by asking the patient to go through multiple treatment regimes until we come to a treatment that actually works for them. And all in all, it leads to poor patient outcomes and poor patient satisfaction. We believe that these challenges will continue to, uh, will continue to, uh, uh, these challenges will continue to pressurize the healthcare environment. And this is becoming even more difficult as medical knowledge is growing way faster than the ability for clinicians to keep up with the change in medical paradigms. We saw during COVID itself, there were so many new protocols, so many new guidelines, so much new research, so many new products created just for COVID that it was very difficult for clinicians to keep up with the changing guidelines on a day-to-day -day basis. And therefore it becomes even more important for clinicians to have access to the most current knowledge because it's not easy for them to be able to find the right resources that would have updated information. So what we at Elsevier want to do is to be able to empower clinicians with knowledge in the right format, wherever they are, whenever they need it. At Elsevier, our goal is to improve patient outcomes by supporting healthcare professionals with the information that they need at the point of care, by supporting patients with the information that they need to be able to make their care decisions, and also by supporting educationists, researchers, and students by preparing them for the future. That's where Clinical Key Physician comes in. Clinical Key Physician is Elsevier's leading clinical decision support tool that delivers quick, credible answers at the point of care, along with trusted, comprehensive medical evidence to support practitioners with their information needs. In the last one year, we've made a number of enhancements to Clinical Key Physician in response to the feedback that we have received from our customers. These enhancements have aimed at achieving four goals. With Clinical Key Physician, we aim to provide a single optimized solution that gives you access to deep referential content as well as point of care information so that the same platform can serve multiple use cases for clinicians, researchers, educationists, and students. 
We work towards improving the speed to answer. That is that we work towards helping you find your answers faster so that you're able to save precious time in the clinical environment. We've maintained the breadth and depth of content, which is what Elsevier is so well known for. We don't want to compromise on the quality and depth of content that our clinicians expect from us, while also maintaining the ability to find answers faster. At the end of the day, our goal is to ensure consistent care delivery. We would like clinicians, researchers, educationists, and students to depend on Clinical Key as a single optimized platform so that everybody is accessing information from a single source of truth. Allow me to share a little bit more about the enhancements that we have made to Clinical Key Physician. The first enhancement revolves around improving content discoverability. We interviewed a number of clinicians all over the world to understand how clinicians think in the clinical environment. We asked them questions about their thought process, and then we have tried to emulate that thought process into our interface, the clinical key physician interface. And therefore, we've been able to create a clinical flow interface that matches the thought process of clinicians thus providing a more intuitive experience when they are searching for information. The second enhancement, as I mentioned, revolves around our search functionality to be able to provide you information faster. Our goal is to help you save time when you're looking for information and provide you relevant answers at the point of care so that you can make quick, reliable decisions for your patients. We've also improved the quality of content on Clinical Key Physician. On Clinical Key Physician, you have access to both referential and point of care content, but it's not just the use case, it's also the information contained in the point of care content, which we have changed to make it more actionable. Our goal is to make sure that the information returned to clinicians on Clinical Key Physician can be directly applied at the point of care without them needing to spend too much time analyzing, thinking, or going through multiple pages. So at the end of the day, we want to also maintain the depth of content available because we believe that that depth of content is so important in helping clinicians uh, develop critical thinking, create new information. A lot of times clinicians need more in-depth answers or they're working on a problem that doesn't have an answer and they need to create answers. And that's where the depth of content comes in. So we've incorporated both point of care content, in-depth content and improved the quality of content to make it more usable and more applicable at the point of care as well as at the same time, enabling you to develop the critical thinking which is so important in healthcare. We've always had a mobile app on clinical, for Clinical Key. The mobile app is available on the App Store and Google Play Store. But more importantly, all the enhancements that we're making to the browser will also be followed up in the app. So the same user experience that we're trying to deliver on the, mobile, uh, on the browser will also be available on mobile. And now, let me show you on the platform itself how these enhancements will actually affect your experience when you're using Clinical Key Physician, whether it be for practice, for education, or for research. So this is Clinical Key Physician. This is what the platform looks like. Many of our clients in Southeast Asia access Clinical Key Physician via IP authentication. What this means is that when you are connected to an authorized IP within your institution, or if you're connected to a proxy IP or a library portal, for example, once you're connected to that authenticated IP, the minute you go to clinicalkey.com, you will be able to access all the content in full text. So once you're connected to your authorized IP, you can already access all the information on Clinical Key in full text. However, we do encourage our users to create an account. So for example, you can see my name on the top right corner over here. 
if I log out of my account, you will see a slightly different menu on the top right corner. So we encourage users to click on register and fill up a brief form, uh, which includes your name, your last name, an email address. This should be your institutional email address, not a Gmail account or a Yahoo account and a password of your choice. And then create an account because create an, uh, creating the account and accessing clinical key while logged into your account allows you a number of additional functionalities such as remote access. You can, once you've created and activated the account, you can activate remote access on your account and access the platform even outside your institution. You can claim CME credits, you can uh, save your searches and create presentations. These are all the things that we will be discussing today. So there are a lot of benefits of registering with an account. Uh, this is the registration page that you would see. Once you fill this page, click register and then click login to log in with your account. So once you're logged in with the account, in the gray bars on the top right, you will find a number of options like CME credits, saved content, presentations, remote access, which were not there if you don't log into your account. So these are some additional benefits of logging into your account. In case you have any challenges in uh, logging in, in, in creating your account, logging into your account or activating remote access, feel free to send me an email and I will assist you. I will make sure that your account gets fully set up. I will share my email address at the end of this presentation. So that was a uh, quick overview of how our clients can access Clinical Key Physician. Let me now go into the platform details itself. For those of you who are familiar with Clinical Key Physician, you will immediately notice the difference in the home page. On the home page, we've actually divided the section, uh, the page into two sections. The first section is about treating and diagnosing your patients with confidence. This is basically providing information which is so important at the point of care so that clinicians can make better care decisions. When you scroll down further, you have the option to deepen your knowledge uh, in your specialty or across specialties. And as I mentioned, that in-depth knowledge is very, very important when clinicians want to develop new information, when they're investing time in research or when they're researching a patient and they want to find fresh answers, it's very important for them to have access to this deepen your knowledge set, uh, section, which basically contains the in-depth content, the referential content, such as books, journals, videos and multimedia. So for example, uh, if you were an expert in a particular field and there was a journal that you would like to read on a regular basis, just click on journals. When you click on journals, you can actually see the entire list of journals, which can be filtered by alphabet or by specialty. On Clinical Key Physician, you have access to more than 700 journals. Uh, of course, this list is updated every month, but approximately 700 over journals are available to you on Clinical Key. So for example, as an expert, if you wanted to have access to the Lancet, just click L and you'll find the Lancet on top. You can click on this. And this will take you to the Lancet homepage within Clinical Key. On the homepage, you will immediately notice that you have access to Lancet all the way back till 2007. So most of the journals are available for at least the prior 10 years, but not only the prior 10 years, you also have access to the latest volumes. So you can see this is the last April issue of the Lancet. You also have access to articles which are still in press. So one important thing to note about Clinical Key Physician. On Clinical Key Physician, you will always have access to the most current information. For example, when I click on articles in press, as you can see over here, these are articles which have been submitted to the Lancet, but they have not yet been published. You can see the stage that they're at. They're at corrected proof. Let me open one for you.
So you can see over here that this article is still in the stage of corrected proof and you already have access to it over here. So as soon as the content is made available to us via, by the journal or by a book, we immediately post it on Clinical Key Physician. There's absolutely no embargo on this platform. You always have access to the latest content on Clinical Key Physician. The other important thing to note about Clinical Key Physician is that as long as you are accessing from an authorized IP network or using an authorized remote access account, you will always have access to full text content, be it books, journals, uh, be it any clinical guidelines or even the point of care content. As long as you're accessing from an authorized uh, method, you will always have access to full text content. So you can see over here, this article is available to you in full text. You can jump to a section of your choice. So for example, if you don't want to read the full article and just read the results, you can actually jump directly to the results. You can go to the top of the article and next to the article, you'll find a little PDF icon. You can even download this article in PDF format. So the PDF format looks very much like the printed version of the article. You can download a copy and keep it for your personal use. Please don't share it outside your organization, but you can use it for your personal use. In fact, on the top right corner, you will see some additional options. So for example, you can print this. You can even email it to a colleague by putting the email address over here. So when you put this email address over here, your colleague will receive a link to this article. And when they access Clinical Key Physician from an authorized network, and they click on this link, they'll be directed straight to this article. You can even claim CME credits for this article. So these are tools which are only available to you if you log in from your account. That's why I mentioned at the beginning that whether you're using IP authentication or any other method, we strongly suggest that you register an account and you log into your account because these tools over here will only be available to you if you log into your account. So going back to the Lancet, as I mentioned, you can, uh, on Clinical Key Physician, you have access to full text journals and you have access to the latest journals. If you're somebody who wants to read Lancet on a regular basis, just click on this bell icon and subscribe. And once you do that, every time a new issue of the Lancet is available, you will receive a notification on your email address. This is again the email address with which you registered. At any point, if you want to turn off these notifications, just unsubscribe on the bell icon. So that's how Clinical Key Physician allows you to access in-depth content, books, journals, videos, and multimedia. But as I mentioned, the core, uh, our core goal of uh, the enhancements in Clinical Key Physician was to provide faster, more actionable information for clinicians at the point of care, which is where these point of care information tabs come in. You could either directly go into one of these tabs. So for example, if you were looking at a patient who's um, suffering from diabetes and you wanted to share more information with them, just go into the patient education tab, type diabetes and search. And you can see over here that there are a number of patient education handouts available. For example, this is generally on diabetes. This is diabetes mellitus and exercise. Another one, diabetes mellitus and exercise. You could open one of these. And as you can see over here, the patient education handout gives all the information that a patient needs to know about their clinical condition, but written in very simple, easy to understand language, supported by images that will make it more interesting for the patient to read. You can use these patient education handouts to share information with your patients. You can even print this. When you're printing them out, you can add some instructions over here. And you can even add your contact details.
You can print it in various sizes. A lot of the patient education handouts are also available in multiple languages. So for example, you could print one in simplified Chinese um, and then just create a printable PDF. So when you're talking to your patient or when your patient is leaving the clinic, you could actually hand out this PDF to your patient or their family or caregiver. In this handout, you will see that the topic is on top, your contact details, as well as the instructions which you gave to this particular patient are on the first page. And the rest of the, page, the, uh, the, rest of the handout contains all the information that you need to share with your patient. So that's how instead of looking for a presentation on diabetes and exercise or looking for information or printing out brochures in advance and then trying to modify them, you could actually just go to clinical key and click on this patient education tab and find a patient education handout of your choice that you want to share and immediately share with your patient. So this helps you to save time, which you may or may not have realized subconsciously you may or may not have realized that you're spending time in looking for presentations or looking for handouts to share with patients. You don't need to do that anymore. You can just find the handouts over here and immediately print them or send the link to your patients to you as well. So that's how you can use these tabs on the homepage. But our research shows, as I mentioned, we've been interviewing clinicians and our clients all over the world. And our research shows that the main point of entry for clinicians continues to be the search bar. Majority of the clinicians, when they are looking for information, they tend to use the search bar. So the search bar is top and prominent on the homepage itself. We've made a number of enhancements, such as we've improved the search functionality. It now recognizes a lot more terms, including medical colloquial terms like AFib, for example. Um, it returns results faster and with making it more and more specific so that it returns more and more relevant results. So let me show you an example. As I mentioned, if I type AFib, the system already recognizes that AFib means atrial fibr fibrillation, and it's already giving me uh, it's already giving me suggestions on what others have been searching. So for example, complications related to AFib, diagnostics, risk factors, et cetera. I could either go into one of these or I can just click search. So you see a search for atrial fibrillation, automa AFib automatically res returns results on atrial fibrillation. As I mentioned, we're trying to make the results more and more actionable at the point of care. So that's why when you search for a clinical condition, the first result in your search results will be the clinical overview. Within the clinical overview, you'll find that we've added these colored pills. The idea is that if as a clinician, if you're looking, if you suspect your patient has atrial fibrillation and you direct and you need to confirm something uh, re related to the diagnosis you shouldn't need to read the entire clinical overview you can just click the pink pill and jump directly to the diagnosis section and over time we hope to build muscle memory in the eyes so that you don't even need to read the word diagnosis or treatment you would already know that pink pill is for diagnosis green pill is for treatment and you can just click it and jump directly to that section so you see, when I click diagnosis, when I click the pink pin, I jump directly to the diagnosis section. And here I can actually confirm uh, any information that I'm looking for. You'll find that the information in the clinical overview is written in very simple straight line bullets. And the bullets are supported by evidence. So you can actually refer to the evidence, making sure that the information that you're looking at is evidence-based. The bullets themselves are actionable information. The clinical overview no longer provides theoretical information, which may or may not be applicable at the point of care. On the contrary, it gives you direct information which you need to be able to deliver care. So it gives you very bulleted, quick information on actions that you need to take. From the gray bar on the left-hand side, you can jump to a section of your choice. So for example, once you've confirmed the diagnosis, you could directly jump to treatment. When you jump to treatment, you will find that, again, for those who are familiar with clinical key, you will find that we've made vast changes to the content in the clinical overviews. The treatment section now is entirely point of care action oriented. It starts with goals. And these goals are, again, evidence-based. 
and then goes into dis disposition, admission criteria, ICU admission criteria, as well as the treatment options. In addition to changing the content, we've also added a number of decision trees. So this is most important for uh, clinicians when they are faced with complex patients who have multiple comorbidities, for example. So you can access these decision trees as well, where you can actually, rather than reading the text, you can go through the decision tree and make sure that what you're practicing is evidence-based. So you can see this particular decision tree. Uh, you Not only can you view it in clinical key, you can even uh, print it or you can add it to a presentation as well. So in, in case you want to refer to it at the bedside, you can even print it later, print it and access it later. So at any point, if you wanna go back to the top of the page, just click top of page. And here you can see that the title of the clinical overview is provided. It's prepared by the Elsevier point of care team. And you can click here to read more details about this team and also when it was last updated. So this particular clinical overview was updated on 15th April, just about three weeks ago. Uh, so that tells you that the information over here is always updated, it's always accurate and current, and you're always accessing uh, guidelines which are based on the re most recent evidence. Let me go back to the search results. Of course, in addition to the clinical overview, uh, the platform returns a number of other different information related to atrial fibrillation. So for example, if you wanted to look at the journal articles related to atrial fibrillation, you can actually use the menu on the left-hand side to filter your results. So for example, if you wanted to look at journal articles on atrial fibrillation, that have been uh, published only in the last six months. So you can filter the results instead of 24,000 over results, we've now filtered it down to 1700 results, and then you can read them further. So for example, this is an article from cardiology clinics. So, this is an article from Cardiology Clinics. As you can see, this is the April issue that we're looking at over here. And again, you can read the full article on the browser, or you can print a PDF of the article, or you can claim CME credits for it, however you would like to use this article. Let me just clear these filters. And I'd like to focus on some of the um, more point of care content types that would be very relevant for clinicians especially. So in addition to the journal articles, there are a number of other content types available. Some useful ones would be, for example, the clinical calculators. So this is a new type of content that we've added to clinical key physician. With clinical key, with, with clinical calculators, you're able to provide a more uh, evidence-based consistent diagnosis and prognosis for your patients. We've added over 600 clinical calculators to the platform. Let me show you this one on atrial fibrillation. So in this clinical calculator, you need to just put in the data for your patient. So for example, this patient has congestive heart failure. Oh, sorry, the page didn't load. So this patient has congestive heart failure. The patient is between 65 to 74, and it's a female. So you can see it gives you the criteria point of three, and then you can refer to the table below on what that criteria point really means. And then there are some additional notes and references for you to understand a little bit more about the results of this clinical calculator. And you can use this data, you can 
put this data into the patient record so that others can have a look at it as well. And then they can make their care decisions based on this data. As you can see on the left, there are a number of cl clinical calculators available. So from here, if I wanted to go into one of the metabolic calculators, I can go here and I can calculate the cardiovascular risk assessment in type 1 diabetes, diabetes risk score, et cetera. So these are very, very useful tools that we've added to clinical key physician. Another very useful piece of information that we've added are the drug class overviews for you to know a little bit more. I'm not going to go into the drug class overviews. Instead, I'm going to show you the drug monographs. So for atrial fibrillation, there are 27 results for drug monographs. Let me open one. This one is on metoprolol. The drug monographs are all sourced from gold standard. So again, you can be assured that the information is coming from a recognized evidence-based resource. You can see the source over here on top. The drug monographs all follow the exact same format. So you could read the entire monograph or if you just wanted to check the contraindications for metoprolol, again, from the menu on the left, just click contraindications and you can jump to the section and read this in more detail. So again, these drug monographs are very important. I imagine if the clinician suspected a patient of atrial fibrillation, they immediately went to diagnosis. From the diagnosis, they checked the treatment. From the treatment, they found metoprolol to be an appropriate treatment and they checked the drug monographs and they found the dosage for metoprolol right here. So you see, that's how clinical key physician is now trying to mimic the thought process of clinicians, more importantly, trying to mimic how questions are raised in the clinical environment and presenting information in that same workflow, in the same way the questions would be raised. Let me just clear these filters. So I'm not going to go through all of these content types. Just one more that I would like to highlight is the images. So on Clinical Key Physician, you have access to more than 2 million high definition images. These the images are copyright cleared, which means that you can actually download these images into your work, be it a presentation, a MOM meeting, uh, a, a lecture or a conference presentation and use that image within or even outside your organization. So for example, for atrial fibrillation, we have about 4,000 over images. Let me click one. So when I click on an image, at the bottom of the image, I have some options here. There's a description and the option to view this image in its original source. But there are also some options right beneath the image. So there's this one little icon called add to presentation. It's the rectangular, uh, the rectangle triangle icon. Click this. And this pop-up will appear. So in this pop-up, you can see there's an option to select presentation. These are all the presentations that I have created in the past. I can choose one of these or I can create a new presentation and save. So AFib5 has been activated and I just click add. Let me close this image and maybe I want to add a few more images. I can either click on each image and add it or uh, I can click this little square on the left hand side. And when I click this, you'll find that the same menu pops up on top. So let me just select multiple images here. I've selected three images and the count on top says three. Let me add these to my presentation. So this option to download images and add to presentation is only available again if you log in using your personal account. So the information regarding your presentations gets saved in your personal account. Another reason why we encourage you to uh, register an account and log in using the personal account. So I can either add and view my presentation directly or I can just click add in case I want to add more images. If I'm happy with my presentation, Again, on the top right corner, there's the option to go into presentations.
And you can see, so the last presentation that I was working on was this one, A55, it's right here. And on the left-hand side, there's the option to export. So when I hit the export button, the images which I had selected and added to my presentation, they all get downloaded into this PowerPoint format. So this is the PowerPoint format. Let me just show it to you on a big screen. And you can see that these are all high resolution images. You can see how clear they are. Along with the image, there's also the source and citation provided. So all you need to do is just copy this image along with the source and citation into your work. You don't need to find images on Google. You can find relevant images on Clinical Key Physician. And after finding images on Google, you don't need to spend any more time on finding the right source and citation, creating the right citation, or even getting authorization from the source to use your image in different, uh, in, in your own work. Uh, you, with Clinical Key Physician, you can just use these images directly uh, and you can share them within or outside your organization. So this really helps to save time when clinicians are working on presentations or uh, research material, for example, and they need to use these images. So that brings me to the conclusion of this demonstration. As you saw on Clinical Key Physician, you have the ability to access in-depth content like books, journals, videos, and multimedia, and use this information to develop your own knowledge, be it for your institution, be it for research, or be it for education. And with Clinical Key Physician, you also have access to summarized content, which will give you quick evidence-based answers at the point of care. So this makes it very easy for clinicians to find information at the point of care and use that information when they, when they are delivering care. Clinical Key Physician is also available in the mobile app, as I mentioned, and you can click these QR codes to download the app. Once again, we would recommend that you Create your account when you're, uh, when you're connected to your institution, create your account, activate remote access, and then just download the app and then you can use the remote access account on this app as well. Uh, there are uh, additional resources available. So for example, if you needed quick handouts on how to search, how to browse, how to activate remote access, et cetera, you can just go to the Clinical Key Resource Center if you really wanted to learn a little bit more, you can also refer to the Clinical Key User Guide, which summarizes all the information that I just talk, talked about. And a very interesting piece of information that I would like to share with you, Elsevier has conducted a global research to understand how healthcare demands and the demands from clinicians will change over the next 10 years and what will be the needs for clinicians uh, in terms of their education, in terms of their skills development, technology, uh, disease focus areas. All of that has been summarized into the Clinician of the Future report. This report is available, freely available on, on the website. So we would encourage you to download the report. And if you have any comments, please do share those with us. So with that, I'd like to conclude our presentation today. I hope this was useful. Should you have any further queries or issues or feedback, feel free to write to me at this email address and I would be very happy to respond. Have a great day ahead and thank you so much.